Okay, we're just going to talk about the swern oxidation of alcohols. Basically, you're looking at an alcohol um, which is can be represented as something like this. So that is R1, R2, and your alcohols here, OH. This is a secondary alcohol, if R1 and R2 are both carbons. And that is going to react to form, in this case, where we've drawn it, a ketone. Okay? And the reagents for that are uh, DMSO, oxalyl chloride, CL, CL, and that's usually done with a base. Um, which is usually triethylamine in dichloromethane, I'll call it DCM, and that's typically done at minus 78 degrees in the first stage. And you can do that, um, so you can get that um, by using acetone and uh, CO2. Cardice solid CO2. So you can do that like that. You usually put the acetone and the carbon dioxide into a little small dewer and put your flask into that and it'll cool down enough. Okay, so that's the general reaction for the Swern oxidation. Just um, show you what DMSO looks like. So I did a, a drawing earlier, here it is. So that's DMSO and it's probably best to write DMSO in this Iliad form here. So here we've got this double bond uh, from the sulfur and the oxygen, but because the sulfur is actually using its D orbitals and the oxygen is using a P orbital to form that double bond, it's not really good overlap. So it really is better to write it in this Iliad form. So an Iliad is just, um, let me just write that down for you. So um, do it in a different color. So an illid is um, this um, um, a s a species like this where you've got two charges right near each other. You might have come across that as a zwitterion in amino acids, but zwitterions have the charges um, much further away from each other. So an illid is a special case where they're right adjacent to each other. Okay, so that's, that's an illid. So we need to um, now understand this reaction, okay? So we need to understand the Swern oxidation mechanism. So how does DMSR help to make the ketone? So let's just move a few things out of the way. If I can. Oops. Move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. And this. I'll just delete. Right, so we're going to try and do the mechanism for that now using DMSO. Here we go. Just put my brush back on. Let's get a, a nice colour. Black will do. Now I'll do it in blue, then you can see it clearly from that other one. Okay, from the uh, scheme above. So, you're going to have to bear with me with my, my drawing now. So this is DMSO. I'm going to write it as CH3. Sometimes I write it as ME for methyl, and that's a three there. Sometimes I'll write that a bit scribbly. Okay, this is oxalyl chloride. It's quite a reactive species. And I'll just grab the red. So there's the curly arrow. That then, when that attacks the carbon now center there, this uh, negative oxygen here. Um, it'll push the electron density towards oxygen. Oxygen quite likes electrons anyway. Um, but what oxygen, this uh, carbonyl tends to do then is flip it back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a double arrow there. So if it attacks here, flips the electrons over, they then flip back and push this chloride out. Okay, so that's the fast way of writing. Um, what I'm going to do now in green, very quickly 
I'm going to draw the intermediate that you would see if it went up and then came back down okay so I'm just going to do that and this I'll do it the long way so the intermediate you would see still got its charge on there I'll just put a circle around that CH3 I'm going to delete this in a minute oh you would see this kind of intermediate or minus CL CL okay so it's a tetrahedral intermediate it doesn't have any chiral structure to that because it could attack from this side uh, from behind the plane or in front of the plane if you will so there's, it's going to be random it's good, so it should be racemic this center um, okay so that's what this double arrow was representing so I've just drawn that reaction arrow coming back and all that means is it's going to bounce back because it doesn't want to be there notice that the charges are still the same it's going to bounce back and then it's going to kick this chloride, chloride out okay and what that does that represents this quick scheme here attack double headed arrow coming back kicking chloride out but the way I've drawn it, it looks a bit crazy. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Forms an intermediate first, very short-lived. Electrons come back, kick chloride out. Okay, let's go back to the mechanism. So that would then give you this species, which is not very long-lived, okay? We've also got to think about the charge as well. We've just mess around with the charge okay so it's a CH3 we've still got a charge on there where's the other charge gone well it's the chloride the chloride ion has left the charge there and that's very important because that chloride is now going to decompose this this species here is extremely short-lived so this then comes in Tax sulfur and then this breaks down do another double headed arrow here okay so we're going through another similar intermediate here but it's broken this bond okay that collapses but instead of losing this oxygen again it now loses electrons here it loses electrons here form um, a species here where the electrons will eventually kick out this chloride so let's just go on to the next step so it's looking a bit messy as this board so I'll tidy this up in a second so this is now gonna look like this CL CH3 CH3 plus now what we need to do this is very important this bit here I will circle this because this is what's going to oxidize our alcohol so this species here we're going to take forward into the next step and I'm going to tidy the board up in a second because it's getting a bit messy now so this this bit here then breaks down draw some curly arrows here these electrons come back okay you've got some electrons here they come back they've just gone up there they become rich and it kicks out the chloride this chloride is going to be the partner to this positive charge so what you actually end up with here is CO2 plus CO, so carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and chlorine, chloride sorry. and that chloride is the counter ion to this species here this species here is a chlorodimethyl sulfonium ion and that, we're going to rub all this out in a second is going to oxidize our alcohol okay so let's just tidy this worksheet up you can always rewind the video if you want to see how I did all this, okay? That's the whole point of these. Just delete that. Just 
delete that and just delete that okay what I've done delete that all I've done here is is brought us back to the basics and move that over here these this is the bit that's important in the mechanism now what's going to happen now I'll use this alcohol actually I use our scheme we have if I just draw this we have on here a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen now this is very oxophilic so that means this will attack chlorodimethylsulfonamine and kick out the chloride now that is going to give this intermediate CH3 all I'm doing by the way, if you notice I draw the sulfonium ion in a similar tetrahedral structure because remember as I showed you before the, there's a lone pair of electrons here on sulfur all I'm doing is just inverting that center okay I'm just twisting this round just to just to make it look easier okay now then we've got to draw this in a way actually I'll just draw it like this for now so we have coming off here still got R1 R2 and we still got that proton there and this is a charge this is now called the alkoxy alkoxy dimethyl sulfonium ion this you can actually keep in the fridge overnight so all the low temperature work has been done okay this you can keep in a fridge at about minus 20 probably uh, I've done this myself and you can you can leave it in the fridge overnight and come back to it and then add the base because the base is the next step if we add the base now use triethylamine it's not the strongest base in the world and what it's going to do it's just going to pick up a proton here and we know this from experimental studies so what I'm going to do I'm just going to quickly cheat take one of those protons off there add that just put a CH2 and add a, the extra hydrogen like that just for the reaction mechanism purposes I'm then going to add triethylamine I'm going to put it there like that. And what I'm going to do now is just use a lone pair of electrons on nitrogen to pick up that proton there. And they then sit just like that. And that forms another illid. And I'll just draw that structure for you. So that illid, although these compounds are looking very, very complicated at the moment. CH2 minus CH3 oh I'm gonna I'm actually gonna deliberately put the proton there R2 and I put positive charge back on there so it's still an illid this is when the magic happens okay trying to get my red pen to work okay this is the alkoxy dimethyl sulfonium illid okay now then this is this is a fantastic step so this electron then picks up this proton like this and as that picks up that proton that electron bond goes onto there like that and then that breaks down and goes back onto sulfur like that now we draw the outcome of that you end up with dimethyl sulfide CH3 sulfur CH3 we a new proton from here put a long pair of electrons in there a long pair of electrons in there just draw them and that just to show you the electrons have come back that's all I wouldn't normally do this that's dimethyl sulfide and that smells like uh, rotten cabbages 
And what have we got left here? Well, if we draw this, R2, R1, we now have a double bond, oxygen, and there's your keton. Or if R1 or R2 was a proton, then that would be an aldehyde. And we know that it deprotonates here because you can actually label this with deuterium and this picks up deuterium instead of a proton so you do know it goes through this mechanism and doesn't just the base doesn't just pick this proton up we know exactly it goes through this because you can do labeling studies and that everybody is the swern oxidation